Hi, this is Bill Gasowicz. Welcome back to Blazor WebAssembly Authentication Mini Series. This is part five, additional features where you'll take will take you through sharing data among Razor components, JavaScript, and debugging WebAssembly apps. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to look at is sharing data amongst uh, the Razor components. So in the previous video, I talked about this current user info service. This service is defined here as um, JEX, the client user service, which to get data, um, it does that. It also defines an event, iProperty notifying event, and or it implements that. And so it will notify uh, people that anytime it changes, and so the key thing here, we talked about the user authentication is populating user. Um, current user is um, gotten from the uh, API, and then it will trigger the event that it changed. So what information is in here? It's the user DTO information, and when we go there, it's the ID, the username, first name, and last name. So this component is passing this data around to anybody that gets injected. So if we go to the program CS file, which is where the services get injected or get defined, you see we talked about that. Add options was there for Entity Framework. Add authorization core um, there for Entity Framework as well and core identity. So these two are there for Entity Framework and core identity. And then we talked about the authentication state provider. Um, I also implemented the iWASM uh, authentication state provider interface using the same implementation API authentication state provider. The user interface we talked about, here's the ad scope for current user info. And that's what we did. We made sure there was ad scoped, which will live for the, uh, the life of the app. And so we can pass this around. So let's go back to current user info. And I did add a counter in here and set it to zero. I don't want to use that initially. I want to actually set it up so that it's not being used. So let's go over to the counter component under pages counter. Right now you can see I've injected underscore current user. But instead of doing that, let's define private int counter and we'll set that equal to zero. Okay, and this is the way uh, it is before uh, in a standard template. And then here we will just do um, counter plus plus. Okay, so uh, let me just say, oh, okay, so counter, I'll just call it, you can't call it the same thing, this counter, and I will call it this counter, and then I will make the counter equal to this counter. So I'll show you what the behavior is when you do it this way. So let's go ahead and stop it and run it. I'll still log in because I still have that authentication authorization uh, thing there. So now we go to counter, click, 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 click. I go home, I go back, it resets to zero, click, 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 click. Home, counter, it keeps resetting back to zero. Okay, so let's just make the small change that we just talked about. And let's run it. If I go to counter, one, two, three, four, five, six, home, back to counter at six, and it maintains the value. And you could always have a refresh or a you know reset uh, button here if you wanted, um, but I did want to show you how to do that. So that was first. So the next thing is how do you call JavaScript? Well, let's go to the login component. And first thing that you need to do is you need to inject, um, and this comes out of the box, IJS runtime. And then I always like to call that underscore JS. Um, and then in the code itself, let's say when the user goes to log in, we want to log to the console user.username. So we'll say uh, underscore JS dot invoke. So there are two invokes. 
So if you notice, invoke async with a type, and then invoke void async. So the invoke void is when there is no return value, and the invoke async uh, with a type is when you want to return a value. Here uh, we'll do void, and we will say console.log, and we will pass it a parameter of uh, username, let's say username is uh, user dot username. Okay. Set that. And noticing one thing here. Get rid of that space. And here it says does not contain it. In, oh, sorry. Async. There we go. And now we get a little green. We can await this if we want. We'll go ahead and do that just to get rid of it and make it look nice and pretty. And let's go ahead and run this. And we will log out. Let's inspect. Let's show the console. Notice there's nothing there. If I go to log in and type in WF, looks like I mistyped console. And we're going to show a way to get around that actually in a second. So let's go to inspect. Let's go to the console and let's log in. And notice it says username is WF. Okay, so that is how you write to the console one way. But a better way to do that is, you know, if you notice I had the typo, I had to run it, you know, what have you. Um, there is a much better way, and it's by let's create an extension method for IJS, IJS runtime. So under the helpers, I have an IJS runtime. And here it's a static class, IJS runtime extension methods, it's static async value task, write to console. It takes in a this, IJS runtime. Uh, of t you know uh, with a name of JS and then it takes in the string and then here I can define the await JS that invoke a void async console log so once I've defined it right the first time I don't have to worry about it again and to write out the message so how you would make sure that this can be utilized is you make sure that in the imports razor file you have the helpers defined as a using or you could put it in each individual component, but I find it a little easier to put it in the in the uh, in the imports razor file. And then in here, instead of putting underscore js dot um, invoke void async, I can do. Uh, let's go back here for a second. I want to show you. I have write to console, and here in login razor, I put js dot Right to console, and if you don't see that there, it's because the help the uh, using with the helpers uh, class uh, is not being found for some reason. And right to console, and then I'll say uh, same thing dollar, uh, and I'll just say my username is ampersand user dot uh, username, and we'll close that off. Close that. And so now we have an extension method for the JS runtime that will, let's just make sure that those red squigglies go away. They do. Let's run it. All right. We'll do the inspect. We'll log out. We'll log in. And here we go. All right. So if you notice, let's go to the console. If right here it says my username is WF. So that works as well. So now, one other piece to this. If you wanted to create your own function, what you could do is go into wwroot. Holder, we'll call this JS. Uh, and then we'll add a new item in there. And we'll make it JavaScript. JavaScript file, and we'll say 
you know, my JS. Just keep the name simple. And here, if we do a function and we say uh, write to console, write to console, we'll leave it all lowercase and we take in a message. And here we say um, console dot log message. All right. And so that should do that. And then what we do is a couple of th a couple more things. So I'll save that. We will then go into the index HTML and make sure that that file is brought in as part of this. So we'll let's drag it in under here. Make sure that that's being brought into the index HTML. And then we'll go over to the uh, this and instead of invoking console.log, we'll invoke write to console. All right, and when we run this, let's turn on the inspect, look at the console, log in. There we go. Same thing. Okay, so multiple ways to do that. And if you had a return value, um, you would put the return value um, in here. You would put the return value as a type to value task here. So if it were a bool, right? And then when you call it, uh, let's say invoke um, async, right? And then what we would do is um, return invoke async and then what we would do here is uh, my js return true okay and that is everything there let's save everything one more thing let's go into js runtime extensions and add the bool okay and then what we'll do here is Let's go over to login, and here we will, um, if that guy, right, so if that comes back as true, then we are going to, we're just going to do something silly. We're going to say underscore js dot write to console to write to console, say, we returned true. All right. So it's pretty pretty silly example, but I just want to show you that we can return values from it. Let's log out. Let's log in. Be helpful if I looked at the console. My username is wf, and we returned true. Okay. So that is using uh, JavaScript, and of course you can use it for a lot of things if you, if you need to, but that's in essence what it is. I didn't await that, so that's why it's green, but it all worked. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this from here for now because I don't want it, and I will get rid of the inject. And then the last thing we're going to look at is how do you debug. So this is a little tricky. But once you kind of get the hang of it, it's it's actually not that bad and it's actually very helpful. So I'll run the application. You can't set breakpoints. If you set breakpoints within a Blazor WebAssembly app, it's not going to be triggered. So the way you need to do it is you run the application. The way you get to debugging is Shift, Alt, and the letter D for debugging. That brings up another page. Now this is just going to be, you know, it kind of looks ugly, but at the end of the day, depending on whether you're using Edge or you're using Chrome, I'm using Chrome right now, you take this and it tells you what to do. Press WinR and enter the following. So I copy this. I'll take this and hit Control C. And then I do Command R, which brings up the Run menu. So that brings up the Run menu. And then I do a Control V. And I click OK. 
That brings up another instance. Notice the one instance was over here. Now the other instance of Chrome is over here. And then you do Shift Alt D again. I know it's a it's kind of crazy, but at least this stuff works. And then what you see is this file down here comes in, and this is your Blazor WebAssembly app. So if you've got client and you've got uh, all your different uh, folders, and we'll go to the pages and let's go to the um, fetch data. And what we'll do is we're going to set a breakpoint right here after we get the forecast. So now we should break when we get there. So let's go back to WASM, uh, the app. And now you can notice because you get this slightly different mouse um, that it's all working together. So that's good. Let's log in. We'll log in as Fred Flintstone. That's fine. And let's click on Fetch Data. And notice we pause in the debugger. We go over here. We are paused on this line. And then over here, uh, under scope, you get a lot of times it's under this. You expand this, and then you see that um, you see some of the variables. And then when you expand this again, you get forecasts. Um, and under forecasts, you get the various uh, values. So if you're ever trying to look for what is the value, um, you will see that. Now you will get some of these messages, can't handle the type. Unfortunately, um, that uh, doesn't always, uh, the, the, the debugger can't handle some of those. What I do in those cases is I'll write date out to the console to see if it's got a valid date in it um, by using the JS uh, um, console um, extension method that we talked about earlier. Um, so that's one way and then what I find here is if I as long as I leave this up I don't close it what I can do is I can go over to the one that was running and I close it it goes back to when you go back to Visual Studio it's not running anymore so let's say I make a change I run it again now what it'll come up over here but as long as I haven't closed this I don't have to go through that shift alt D I just have to refresh this page over here go to home I refresh it I can log out but more importantly this says reconnect dev tools I find if I just refresh this page over here everything comes back and you get the file and many times the breakpoints that you've set are already set when you do that so it's not the cleanest way to debug but at least it's a way to look at um, how code is navigating and, and again just to make sure that it all so just to make sure paused in debugger we go over to dev tools and you see that I'm triggered here and then we've got some of the same tools here uh, stepping into and what have you and if I continue and I go back it loaded the forecast and I'm fine and then since that's a breakpoint I'll get it every time okay so let's continue and we'll go back so hopefully that was helpful um, the video took a little longer than I expected, but that's okay because I think it's some pretty good uh, informative information. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.